Well, our conversation continues with Laura Valentine, and now we add her mother, uh, Dr. Susan Sharp, to our panel, and welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Delighted to have you here back again, Laura. You had a great interview with Moira in our previous half hour. Um, we talked a lot about your story. I, I would like to, to talk a little bit about, with both of you, uh, the story continuing, but also the whole thing related to uh, what's going on with your ministry because I think you're doing some amazing things that are, you know, when I look at it and I see how you've done, what, what you've done and where the Lord has brought you and yet so young and uh, loving parents who are so committed to what's going on. It's a great story we want to continue to, to, to promote here. So um, you're at David Lipscomb in, yes. in Nashville. Yep. And uh, you are studying, are you studying communications or journalism? Yes, communications. All right. So, so, um, what are you, with, with, with your studies right now, um, are you fr a freshman year, first year? Yep, freshman. Okay, so you're just getting into this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was a journalism major, University of Georgia, a uh -huh. hundred years ago. And uh, someone gave me great advice when I started. They said, uh, uh, in fact, uh, Charles Corral, who was a uh, man, yeah. uh, you remember, yeah. of, of, our, of our era, great newsman with CBS News, uh, he, he did a thing called On the Road. He gave me great advice. He said, uh, when he came to speak at Georgia one time, he said, listen to great talkers and read great writers. Mm -hmm. And it was a great philosophy. And I think for you, what I am seeing and experiencing in you is that you are on this journey that you're learning something earlier in life than, uh, than I did when I was 18, 19, 20 years old when I was your age now, because you have already in your life been exposed to so many great people. I have indeed. And it's, you know, it's all starting with the parents. They've, um, you know, they've experienced me, like, led me out to, like, different cultures and different places. So I'm you, very happy. You've been around great people. Yes, yeah. I have. Uh, Susan, um, your background, uh, you're, you're, you're actually doctor. You have a doctor of ministry from right. Bethel Seminary. Right. Um, how did you and your husband move in this direction uh, of, of being of able to say, yeah, I, we want to adopt a, a, a child? and we're going to be proactive about it. Well, we knew we wanted to have a child, and we knew we wanted a little girl, and so um, we had a little boy. And we um, kept saying, I kept saying, you know what, I, I'm just, God keeps telling me we need a little girl. And so we both just, uh, at that time, it was in 1996, and um, adoptions from China were pretty regular. Yeah. And there was never a second thought. We just knew God was calling us to go to China and adopt a little girl. Did you work with an agency? Or we did. Or did you have relationships in China? How did it work? No, we worked with an agency out of Wheaton, Illinois. And um, actually, it was kind of a um, confusing way we got there. We um, were kind of open to whatever country in China we zeroed in on. And then they did assign us to a little girl who was um, lost. but. Um, Back then, there was a lot of um, news about what was going on in China with adoptions. And I believe China kind of thought it was a little bit of a propaganda ploy. Mm -hmm. And so they canceled all the Americans going into China to adopt. And they just told us to wait, that it would all be back on soon. So we did wait, but at the end of the waiting period, they called and said, um, the good news is the adoptions are back on, but the bad news is we can't find your daughter. So we got reassigned, mm. and we got reassigned to Laura Valentine. And um, we knew as soon as we saw her picture that all the adoptions had been canceled because the wrong little girl had been placed in our home. Uh, my, so. uh, my wife has two sisters, and both of them adopted in that same period of time in the okay. mid-'90s uh, boys, uh, from, uh, one from, uh, both from Russia. Okay. So there was a similar movement taking mm -hmm. place at that time. I remember the stress that uh, my sisters-in-law and their husbands went through. It was very bureaucratic and mm -hmm. very difficult sometimes. You have obvious language issues right. and cultural issues and political issues, et cetera. Uh, talk for a moment about how you and your husband were, was it a stressful time for you and, 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 and how did you cope through that? You know, uh, it, looking back, it was not stressful because we kind of left it in the hands of the agency. We knew that um, we had James, so we already had, we had a beautiful baby boy that I, I was home with raising, so he kept me going all day. You know, and James went, is a year older yes, than Yes, he's okay. 10 months yes. older. Okay. So um, we were obviously very confused and frustrated when they canceled the trips, and then when they said that 
you've been reassigned because we'd received the little picture of the girl that we thought was going to be in our home. Yeah. So you kind of grew attached to that. And, you know, she was, we had her picture at different places around the house, you know, because yeah. she was the family. So I think that was what was frustrating. Um, right after they reassigned us, they told us, if you want to go get her, you need to go now. So that became then where the stress came in because we were no longer part of a group, no longer with a guide that was going to take us over there. So we made plans to go over alone. Where did you fly to? Uh, we flew first to LA and then right into Hong Kong and then into, um, I'm not sure, Wan, uh, Wan Chang, I so, think, something like that. So just that alone is yeah, stressful. That if you're just it. going as a tourist or you're going over on business, that alone is stressful. Or if you went with the group, they generally had you with someone from the agency in a group of like 10 families. But you didn't have No, that. we didn't. But halfway through, they said, if you wait another week, we'll hook you up with a family and then, I mean, with a group, and then you'll, you won't be on your own for the final were you going through um, you know, the embassy and all of that? So we said, okay, so we stayed an extra week, which then became stressful because my son was at home with my parents. And it was just hard being away from him for three weeks. But um, like I said, I think that um, for us, it was just really, okay, God, we, are, we know that you're in charge of this and you have the right girl coming now. So we're not gonna step in and do anything to mess this up. And I think that was the difference that we just, um, we realized that he wanted us to have the, the girl he had. And most people Absolutely. think that, um, you know, just having a child biologically is the miracle. But for us, it was like a double miracle. She was born somewhere and she almost got to another home, but instead God made it so she came to us. So Laura, what's it like for you when you are, um, and you're 18 and uh, maybe you haven't developed all your reflective skills yet as you get older. Your mother <laughs> and I both know that, 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 that gets stronger as you get older. Yeah. But here we're talking about two people that were in pursuit of you and a God that was in pursuit to make sure that this family and you hooked up. What's that like for you as you process that and think through that in a reflective way? You're right. It, it still hasn't come fully, but you know, um, each time I feel like I, I wasn't adopted. I feel like I'm right into their family and it feels right. But um, it's it's incredible. Yeah. It's it's hard to describe because it's just like I don't know. What's the amazing fact is she my parents didn't meet me, but they had already so much love that they just poured it into just a measly picture of me, mm. and they decided to drop everything and just fly to China to get me, and they already fell in love with me. And I you know no one can really explain that or fathom the... It, it's just so wonderful though because it, it's a beautiful picture of how much they valued you. Yeah. And that's only a small portion of how much God in His infinite love values you. And uh, I don't know, that's a, that's a great self-esteem builder if you ask me. That <laughs> is just awesome. That's it, it is. Yeah, yeah. So you, you get her. And uh, how long were you there before the, 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 the I'm sorry, the, the handoff took place? Um, about two and a half weeks. All so right. most of the time we were there, we were not. And there's a lot of waiting. There's a lot of waiting. <laughs> there's a lot of politics and a lot of, yeah. yeah. So about, um, it was about in the middle of the third week. Mm -hmm. And they brought her out. There were, um, like I said, we'd hooked up with this other group. And we were all supposed to get the children one morning and everybody was mad because there was one child that was coming from far, far away, not part of the group that was holding up the group. And we knew who that was. So we kind of stayed in our room that day because we knew that you know everybody was stressed and everybody was anxious and yeah. we were holding up the show. Yeah. So that we finally got the call, come on down, they're coming in. And it was just amazing. I mean, one by one, these babies would come in with, um, I don't know if they were foster parents or some kind of guardian, but right. they would come in. And everybody knew who their child was, so they were all looking anxiously for their child. And then they put them all in a back room, and it was like a hotel room with, they were like in the bedroom, and we were all out in like the living room. And one by one, they'd announce the children and come out, and everyone was excited, and it was fun, and it was really like, my, my husband said it was like being in the waiting room when James was born, because yeah. it was the same kind of feeling. And then there were two left, and, um, well, before let me back up a little bit, when she came through the room, when they were taking her to the back room, she came through laughing and she was kind of waving to everybody and laughing and kind of caught everybody's attention and we knew she was ours. So we'll never forget when they, when they came out with the baby before they brought her out. Um, they were happy to get her, but when they brought Laura Valentine out, they kind of went towards Laura Valentine. And I remember I was like one of those tiger moms. I just got right up and said, I'm sorry, I've got her picture. She's mine. And I grabbed her. 
So it was like here people were fighting for her. It was just really fun. Another esteem yeah. builder there. So <laughs> yeah. we'll fast forward today. Uh, uh, we, in the previous segments, we've heard about the career and how that's going and what's taking place there. But you have a contest going on to help families, uh, help a family that would like to be able to adopt. Tell us about this sweepstakes contest briefly, and, and then we want to direct people to go there. Well, it's attached to my second album right about now. And so one lucky family or person who is in the process of adopting will win up to 20 grand for their adoption funds through um, going to my website, which is www.laura-valentine.com and buying a CD, which is $10. All the money goes to helping abandoned children get adopted into Christian homes. And um, yeah. Well, if you're, if you, you, we've got just a few more days to enter because the deadline, I think, is the, the last day of October. Yes. So we want to make sure that you, you go online and that you, that you register from uh, the time you're seeing this to the time that uh, the contest is done. It's just a little window here. So make sure that you get on there and, and help out this uh, wonderful effort. Uh, this is a great, great thing that you're doing as a family. It's a wonderful thing that you're doing as, as an artist. And uh, the future is very, very bright for you. And I'm just so grateful that we've had the opportunity to get acquainted with you. Hope you'll come back and see us. Thank you. I hope and, so. And um, I just want to salute Susan, you and your husband, Ken, oh. for your desire to make other people's lives better and to contribute so profoundly into the life of, uh, of Laura Valentine. It's exciting. Thank you. you. Come back and see us again soon, okay. would you? We'd love to see you and continued success. Thank you. God bless you.